Hello and welcome. I've had my Steam Deck for a little bit now, and I've been getting quite a few responses to make a video for Final Fantasy XIV on the Steam Deck. So here it is. This is my configuration for Final Fantasy XIV on the Steam Deck. Now, first off, I need to address that Final Fantasy XIV as of March 31st, 2022 is labeled as unsupported by Valve's rating system for the Steam Deck. The reason is that the new launcher itself cannot run with Proton, the compatibility layer that allows certain games to run on Linux. And so with the Steam version of Final Fantasy XIV, the launcher is forced into the new launcher which means that you will not be able to sign in due to compatibility issues. This will more than likely change as there has been some reports that Square Enix is aware of this issue. However, if you have the non-Steam version of Final Fantasy XIV, you will be able to do a workaround. This video here goes through this, those steps, and I will re redirect you to that video, as this video is very clear and concise. I'm currently not sure if there's a workaround for the Steam version as of yet. Please let me know in the comments, and I will sticky your comment. Now, the first thing you probably should do before you even go into Final Fantasy XIV on the Steam Deck is upload your UI. This will allow your UI from your PlayStation or PC to be transferred onto the Steam Deck seamlessly. From the character selection page, you can see that you're able to upload your UI, then re-download your UI once you're into Final Fantasy XIV on the Steam Deck. If you're coming from a 1080p or a 4K setup, your UI will more than likely not look the same as it was before. That's because of the change in resolution, as your UI you've downloaded is set to a certain resolution. If your UI elements are set at 100%, you should be able to go into the system config and globally set your UI elements down to 80%. 80% is what I used for the Steam Deck, and it looks totally fine. Just a bit of tweaking here and there, and your UI should be good to go for the 800p system. But if you have UI elements that are larger than 100%, you may still need to do some tweaking anyway. Now let's get to some of the button configurations. So just a bit of background, I've always been a controller player. I use the Xbox Elite controller with the back paddles, and so going to the Steam Deck was pretty natural for me. I set the back paddles to the same as I did with the Xbox Elite controller. My L4 and R4 buttons function the same way as my bumpers on each side. And the L5 button is set to F10 on the keyboard. That is because I set that button as my push to talk for Discord. I'll talk more about that later. I also reconfigure my right touchpad to the D-pad as on the Xbox Elite controller. I tend to use my right hand to reach over to the D-pad so I can move while hitting the abilities on the D-pad. Of course, this isn't really possible on the Steam Deck, so my next best option was to set the right touchpad to the D-pad as an alternative D-pad for abilities on the Steam Deck. And finally, I set my left touchpad as the mouse and left click. This configuration is what works for me so far, but don't take this configuration to heart. Play around and see what works for you. You've got so many options to take here. There is also the option of using a keyboard and mouse as well, of course, because the Steam Deck is a PC. You may need to buy yourself a USB-C hub, like the one I have on screen. This one is the Anchor 7-in-1 USB-C hub. It has two USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI port, one for the charger, and an SD and micro SD slot. This hub in particular is rated 60 watts as the Steam Deck needs at least 45 watts and the hub itself needs 15 watts. So if you're gonna get a hub, make sure it's at least 60 watts or over. Now, I've seen some reports of other hubs breaking the Steam Deck, and so if you don't want to risk it, there's always the official dock from Valve if you want to wait for that. But with this hub, since there are two USB ports, you're able to hook up a keyboard and mouse and play Final Fantasy XIV on that if you so choose. I personally have a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, mostly because they're originally for my iPad, but it works like a charm here. Now, let's get into using Spotify and Discord while playing Final Fantasy XIV. To get these apps, you must go into the desktop mode and search up Spotify and Discord on the Discover app. Once those are downloaded, you can go into Steam on the desktop mode and go to the bottom left corner and click Add Game. Click Add a non-Steam game and find both Spotify and Discord. 
these are already downloaded for me, so they're not gonna show up. But I'm just gonna add Google Chrome just to show you that it works. Now, you should be able to launch both apps on the gaming side of Steam OS. Let's talk a bit about Spotify. Now, let's get into Spotify because that's probably an app that you'll probably want to play in the background while you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. So I've already shown you how to add it onto your um, Steam OS side or the gaming side of Steam OS. Excuse the microphone, it is coming from the actual phone so you might be able to hear the fan, but the whole point is just so you can hear the actual audio from the actual Steam Deck uh, and hear Spotify while you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. So, Obviously you could just go into, I already have Spotify opened up, but if you need to go to and want to open Spotify, it should be in the non-Steam section. You know, we open that up and it should just be there. Now, obviously there are a multitude of ways to control. Obviously using the controller is not as intuitive. So you can use your hand to just go down and up you can also have an external microphone, or not microphone, uh, external mouse. You can also use the touch pads as well. I'll just use the external um, mouse just to, just for ease. And you should be able to play any music while in the background. So let's say I play uh, this Final Fantasy 15 music. Now we should be able to get into Final Fantasy 14 and you should still be able to hear that there are is sound coming from the game itself. So there you go. That is Spotify working in the background while you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. Again, it's just much like alt tabbing. You just go into the Spotify side. You don't close it, however, when you want to switch. You just switch over to the next, uh, I guess, uh, you just switch over to 14, and you should be able to have Spotify in the background. So what you're currently hearing right now is myself talking to the Steam Deck through Discord. And the audio that you're hearing is the audio that your friends are probably going to be hearing when you're using Discord. Now I'm gonna be showing you that Discord can still work while you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. So if I switch over, you can still hear my audio go through Discord while I'm playing, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to show you real quick that push to talk also works while you're playing Final Fantasy XIV. Now, if I switch over and show you that I actually set up my back button, my L5 button to F10. As I said before, that's my push to talk button. So if I switch this over, now you should be able to hear myself with uh, push to talk being pressed down. And so I'll show you that this also works while Final Fantasy, while you're playing Final Fantasy. And so you can still hear my audio go through while I'm pressing the push to talk button. So it's a good way to actually, you know, talk to some friends while you're playing these while you're playing Final Fantasy 14 and it's it's essentially just like alt tabbing. So there you go. That is Discord running in the background while you're playing Final Fantasy 14. And now I want to talk quickly about how the Steam Deck feels and playing Final Fantasy XIV on it. As I've said in the Final Fantasy Steam Deck video, I've already done quite a bit of content such as Alliance Dungeons, Expert Roulettes, and even a Raid Night on stream. And let me tell you, while it is possible to do raiding on this deck, holding this for more than an hour does make your arms feel tired, so it's probably just better to go to a dedicated desktop setup for raiding. However, it does feel amazing to just have a device like this when I don't feel like being at my desk. I've also put in so many hours just playing before bed and doing a bit of casual stuff. So the purpose of the Steam Deck is definitely being fulfilled for me. It certainly will not replace my actual desktop setup, but it's nice to have the alternative. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed my look into Final Fantasy XIV on the Steam Deck, and I look forward to seeing more people with their Steam Deck soon. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It will always be appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.